Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. Self-seduction is something that I think gets overclouded by self-care. And I don't see really a lot about self-seduction on YouTube, so I think it's time to bring more awareness to this subject. If you are new to this channel, I talk a lot about how to become unforgettable, how to leave a lasting impression, how to achieve autonomy in both the mind and body so that you can be in this world, but not of it. I attempt to encourage transcendence. And I like to do this by sharing knowledge from ancient cultures and their women. And this is not that kind of channel, so I don't go into the history, but I take great inspiration from their rituals, their ideologies about femininity, and their sacred rites, so that I can inform my philosophy on how to become ethereal. Someone who is not of this world. How to be absolutely transfixing. Truly beautiful. Self-seduction is certainly one of these things. Dita Von Teis, an absolute babe, had an interview with Vice where she spoke about how she seduces herself before anyone else. That there's an art to womanhood. An art that exists in privacy. There's a reason why Dita is so alluring, and it's because she's not performing for anybody, uh, aside from obviously being on stage. For her, glamour is a daily practice. She does just as much work when she is alone as she does when she's with a man. She doesn't <laughs> let loose, so to speak, come home, take off her bra, and flop on the couch. She talks about lingerie and putting it on every day and enjoying the process. I saw this tweet somewhere floating around the internet that said, if I'm wearing lingerie, that means it's me who decided to have sex, not you. Insinuating that lingerie is some kind of signifier that you are sexually available, that on this specific night with this specific person, you knew something spicy was gonna happen. You shaved your legs, you did your hair, you did your makeup, you dressed differently. I myself did this whenever I was younger. But after years of brooding on my sexuality, and specifically after listening to Dita, I realized that getting dressed up for a man shows a lot more respect for him than it does for you. Now don't get me wrong, I think that dressing up for your man is wonderful, and I think it can be seen as a gift and an act of love and devotion. But when you neglect yourself the rest of the time, you start asking yourself, who am I putting all this effort in for? A man? For men? Seems pretty one-dimensional to me, and at its worst, almost sexist. And I don't, I really don't like to use that word. Dita's advice in this interview was to self-seduce, to maintain glamour every day, so that when a man does come along, and he unravels you in body and spirit, that He's still in awe, but all of that had become second nature to you. You become effortless. You become ethereal. Dita also mentions how she doesn't let a man see everything either. Privacy and seclusion and secrecy are very important concepts that deal with self-seduction and femininity in general. They are very crucial to maintaining mystique. And I cannot believe I've never used that word on this channel. Mystique. Mystique is the key to femininity and womanhood. Women hide, lead astray, confuse, bewilder. Being feminine is about theater, uh, something that I've said on this channel before. You raise the curtain when you decide. When you walk out of your boudoir to your man, you have magically appeared from some unknown depth, some kind of sacred, otherworldly place where goddesses have procured you for him. Seeing the process of how you make yourself up, how you fasten your garter belt, how you flick the wing of your eyeliner, is sacrilegious to witness. And if it is witnessed, it's usually deliberate, not by consequence of a confined living space. You are simply to appear without explanation, like an atmospheric anomaly. Being alone and finally being out of the male gaze where you can just be a person doesn't give you an excuse to be a slob. It doesn't give you an excuse to release the load so much that you're just this blob 
in a stained t-shirt watching TV on the couch. It's really funny, but my old friend, uh, I was looking at her computer one day back in high school and I found this video of her that was a webcam recording that she didn't know was there. And it recorded her for over an hour just doing nothing in her room, eating on her bed, doing something at the mirror. She stubbed her toe at one point. And when she saw me watching this, she slapped down the computer. <laughs> and I'm laughing at this point because I think it's so funny. And she says, sometimes I just have to be ugly, alone and ugly. And I just remember thinking that I was looking into something almost forbidden. Privacy does allow you the luxury to release, to do something stupid, to make a mistake, or to be ugly, as she would have worded it. But I don't want to necessarily give into that completely, because all that says to me is that you're performing for the world that decorum and beauty is just entertaining gestures for society, or so that you can pass. That it's all for them and none of it's for you. I mean, where's the self-respect in that? I mean, if it's all an act and no wonder it's so damn exhausting when you come home, there's absolutely no pleasure in getting ready. Everyone is out the door, you know, just barely scraping by. Nothing is sacred to us anymore. We don't take the time for ourselves. We don't take the time to self-seduce. When you're alone, that is a sacred space. Another thing that I say on this channel a lot, solitude is sacred. Secrecy is sacred, especially if you're a woman. A woman can never be known. We are too convoluted, so stop explaining yourself. Never apologize, never explain. When you're alone, it's not a place to neglect yourself and recuperate from the struggles of daily life. That's what sleep is for. As often as you can, you should take the time to be alone and dedicate a period of time completely to yourself, to your femininity. The last vestige I see of this is girls doing their makeup or sometimes their hair in the morning. The same girl I mentioned earlier took four hours to get ready before school, in high school. But self-seduction should be more than just makeup. It should be an attitude, a lifestyle. It should be laying around nude with candles around you and music. It should be wearing your best lingerie under your clothes every day. It should be brushing your hair for a long time and putting fragrant oils in it, putting oils on your skin and really feeling your skin. Taking care of yourself or ritualizing glamor should not be seen as vain and it should not be seen as too tedious to even try that, to do it every day. Because like I said earlier, uh, like Dita had said, it starts to become second nature and then you start really enjoying it. You start enjoying the, the ritual of being a woman. It's a dedication to that. Self-seduction is a sacred ritual done in secrecy to honor femininity, sexuality, and mystique an act that replicates the very nature of the feminine. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please leave a like, a comment. I, again, I love to hear everybody's comments, what your thoughts are, uh, critiques, whatever it may be. Please subscribe, tell your friends about me, and I will see you guys next week.